In 1985, Matchbox became the first American toy license holder for the massively popular cartoon Voltron, Defender of the Universe. World Events Productions had created Voltron by rewriting and editing the anime Beast King Go Lion and releasing it in the United States. The Japanese toy company Bandai had already produced die-cast Voltron sets, so Matchbox simply brought those over to the U.S. shores, and today we'll be taking a look at the Voltron Deluxe Lion set here on Creed's Collection. All right, everybody, Merry Christmas and welcome to the Creed's Collection Christmas Special. Today we're taking a look at the Voltron Lion Force, one of my favorite toys I had as a child. It's based off the Voltron cartoon, a cartoon I also loved watching, where five space explorers go to the planet Eris and discover the five mech lions that create the mighty defender Voltron. You may be familiar with the far superior Netflix reboot. And we're going to jump right into this one. There are five different toys here to look at. So here we go, starting with lion number five, the yellow lion. The yellow lion was discovered in the desert of Planet Eris, and it is piloted by Hunk. He is the big, lumbering, kind-hearted member of the team. When they combine to form Voltron, the yellow lion becomes the left leg. Now, because these were originally produced in Japan by Bandai, there's some neat things going on with these. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. I like the lines they have etched in to make it look like machined metal. That's pretty nice. Here's a quick close-up of the head and another quick close-up of the side so you can really appreciate some of the finer detail work they put on there. So getting back to those little details that Bandai put in that you might not know about on the American release, there's actually small missile launchers hidden here on the side of the head and they don't have the missiles or the springs in them anymore. That was all removed for the American release because of safety standards, but there used to be buttons built into it so it would launch the missiles out. He also has this articulated jaw right here. It's spring-loaded so it snaps shut, which is different than the blue line, but we'll get back to that. Anyway, this is where the button was. It was right here. You'd push it in and it would launch the missile. And then down here on the bottom, this is where the buttons used to be for these. Again, though, they were never on the American release to begin with due to some sort of safety standard. As far as leg articulation goes, all the lions have the hip, knee, and ankle articulation on all their legs, which is nice. Makes them pretty poseable. The jaws articulated, as I already showed you, and the tails can fold up when it goes into robot mode. Also, the yellow and blue line have the ability to look up because their heads have to fold up to be a foot. All right, now let's go ahead and turn it into its leg mode. So you're just gonna fold the legs in like so and the tail. And once you do that, you go ahead and fold up the front legs. Now, these joints, you wanna pull them out, then lift them. They're, the way they're set up, they're actually segmented so that they'll snap into place. And then once you have them set like that, you just lift the head up and there you go. It is in leg mode. And now we're going to take a look at lion number four, the blue lion. The blue lion was found at the bottom of a lake on the planet Eris near the castle. It was originally piloted by Sven, one of the space explorers, but he was captured early in the series and then replaced by Princess Alora of the planet Eris. The detailing and size of the blue lion are very similar to the yellow lion, obviously, because it is the right leg of Voltron. Here's a close-up of the face and a little bit better look at the top of the head, which has some pretty interesting detail on it. And we'll come back to that here in just a second. Right now, here's the side of it. It's just to give you a better idea of the detail close-up. Again, I really like how they etched in the lines to make it look like it's actually mechanical. The blue line also had hidden missile launchers that were removed due to safety standards. One in the back and one right here under that head detailing we were just talking about. I feel like when that head has popped up, it looks like a crown, and I think it's neat that the princess is the one who drives the lion that looks like it has a crown. The blue lion also has an articulated jaw, but it is not spring-loaded like the yellow lion. It never has been. Even when I was a kid, it was not spring-loaded. So I've always wondered if that was on purpose or if it was just a mistake in the toy that I got. Transformation's identical to the yellow lion to turn into the right leg. You just fold in the tail, fold in the legs, and then lift up the head like so, and there you go, right leg. Moving right along, we're going to be taking a look at lion number three, the green lion. 
The green lion was found in the forest of Planet Eris. It was hidden inside of the stump of what looked like an old giant redwood. The green lion is piloted by Pidge. He is the youngest member of the group. He's also the most intelligent. He is kind of like the tech guy. When they form Voltron, the green lion becomes the left arm. There you go, there's a closer look, and you can see that right in the center there is where Voltron's arm joint would be. That is why it's segmented. And there's a closer look at the face. The red and green lions are the smallest of the lions because they're the arms. They have to be a little bit smaller than the body and the legs. Just makes sense. They also both have a yellow button right here on top that allows you to launch off their head. And that's the only spring-loaded feature that made it overseas from Japan. Transforming it into arm mode is as easy as just folding in the legs and then folding down the tail. The tail is the actual shoulder joint. It's what attaches it to the Voltron robot. There you go. Left arm. Here's a close-up of the fact that the upper arm is hollow, and that is how the arm folds in so flush. It's pretty nice. Next up, we have lion number two, the red lion. The red lion is piloted by Lance. He's the loudmouth second in command. He's kind of brash, he's kind of obnoxious, but he's also probably the funniest character. The red lion is the right arm of Voltron, and I don't think that's by accident since he's also the second in command. Also not an accident is the fact that they found the red lion inside a volcano, a fiery location matching the personality of Lance, the pilot. As you can see, the detailing is pretty much the same as the Green Lion, since it has to become an arm just like it does. It's got the same launching mechanism for the head, and the transformation sequence is identical. Fold in the legs, fold down the tail, and there you go. Right arm. And without further ado, let's take a look at Lion number one, the Black Lion. The Black Lion was hidden inside of a statue in front of the castle on the planet Eris. It is piloted by Keith. He is the leader of the Space Explorers. He's the most level-headed. He's kind of like the Captain America of the group. He's always trying really hard and never feels like he's doing as well as he should. The Black Lion is the body and head of Voltron, so it's actually much larger than the other lions, and it's considered the most powerful. It has the same level of articulation in the legs as all the other lions. Here's a close-up of the face. But here's the one thing it does that the other lines don't do. It can actually look down, and this has to do with the transformation to Voltron. Sadly, I did break the tail off the black line when I was a kid, but I just keep it folded up now and I pretend like it's a Manx cat. The black line doesn't have any special features like hidden missile launchers or anything like that, so we'll just go ahead and transform it into the body of Voltron. Start off by straightening out the legs like so, and then these little doors right here, they open up and you flip the legs back around inside. Once the leg is inside, you simply rotate the arm around and line up the shield like so, and then repeat the process on the other side. At this point, you'd probably normally fold the wings out, but I'm going to wait and do that last, because my wing hinge has a tiny crack here, and I don't want to overdo it. So now the head rotates down like I showed you earlier, and you flip out these two pieces, and then the jaw opens to form the head of Voltron. And now that we've transformed all the lions, let's combine them to form the mighty Voltron. Behold, Voltron in all of his glory. Standing nearly 12 inches tall and being made almost completely of die-cast metal, this guy is a beast of a toy. You have no idea how heavy and hardy he feels in your hands. While the five lions are all impressively detailed and look great on their own, no one is going to display them in any other way other than formed as Voltron. Here's a closer look at the feet to the head. It's just pretty cool seeing all the lions combined. It's just a really iconic robot, and I think most people know what Voltron is, even if they think they don't. Here on the back, you can see some copyright date stickers. I'll show you a close-up of one of those in a minute, and you can also see where the wings have cutaways that link right into the back shoulder joints of the black lion. Here's a closer look at the face sculpt, which I love. There's a three-quarter view of it as well, and a little bit closer look at the detailing on the chest and belt buckle area, which I think look really great. Voltron does have very limited articulation in robot mode. You can actually move the arms up and down by pushing in the shoulder joint. When you release it, they kind of lock into place. It also has a swivel here at the shoulder joint, kind of like a G.I. Joe. I like that quite a bit, and of course it's got the segmented elbow. The only other articulation he has is right here at the hips, and that's about it. 
But you know what? Who cares? This is the first time where articulation did not affect my love for a toy at all. I mean, look at this guy on display. He is majestic. So like I said earlier, we'll take a look at one of the copyright date stickers here. It's Mark 1981, and this is Bandai made in Japan. It's interesting to me that there's no Matchbox copyright on these whatsoever, but I guess since they don't actually produce the toy, it doesn't matter. And now for our He-Man size comparison. I think He-Man is starting to feel a little insecure because here lately he has been dwarfed by all the toys. And it's no different here with Voltron standing at nearly one foot tall. Sorry He-Man, maybe you'll be the big dog next week. Everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy review for the Voltron Deluxe Lion Set from the 1985 toy line Voltron by Matchbox. I opened this guy up on Christmas Day 1985 and I remember it vividly and I have cherished this toy ever since. If you enjoyed the review, please leave a thumbs up and if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and it would help my channel grow. I review a toy for my vintage collection every Wednesday, so I hope to see you next week and every week after here on Creed's Collection.